Head over into SketchUp, disable sunlight in lights within V-Ray Asset Editor, disable environment in settings, and now all the default lights of V-Ray are turned off. Then create a rectangle light. If you directly click Render next, you will see nothing but the light itself and it will not look like light at all. The worlds in SketchUp and in reality are different because the real world is full of air, but in SketchUp, there is nothing. The light from the rectangle light doesn't reach anything, so you can't see it. In reality, when light passes through colloidal particles, such as hazy air, the Tyndall effect, more commonly called volume light, occurs. It can not only make the rendering look more realistic, but can also strengthen its atmosphere. So, how do you create volume light in SketchUp and V-Ray? To show how it is achieved, I chose the picture from the opening of the American TV series Counterpart, and then I made it into a desktop wallpaper. Okay, now let's get started. The model is quite simple. Build a large space that is 27 meters high and 27 meters wide, and open huge round holes on the wall. Then put some pillars with the side length of 15 meters randomly in the distance of the site, and adjust their positions and heights a little. Well, just like this sacred feeling. The character model is from 3D Warehouse. The most common PC screen resolution is 1920 by 1080. So set the composition ratio to 16 by 9 in rendering output of Asset Editor. The whole model only uses one concrete map. Enlarge the UV size of this map to make the scene look like a place for giants. In V-Ray, the volumetric environment has two modes aerial perspective and environment fog. Both can simulate air filled with dust, but the latter is more advanced and can create volume shadows. Usually, we use the aerial perspective mode to create spatial depth for distance view and the environment fog mode to create the Tyndall effect of light passing through the fog. First, render with the aerial perspective mode. You only need to focus on the relationship between the model scale and the two parameters in the aerial perspective options. The unit of both parameters is meters. Atmosphere height refers to the height range of fog calculated from the zero point of the z-axis. This is the result after setting it to 1 meter, 10 meters, and 30 meters. Obviously, it only needs to cover the model completely. The default value is 6,000 meters, which is usually enough. Visibility range refers to how far the object can be seen from the observation point. This is how it looks after setting it to 20 meters, 50 meters, and 100 meters. The farthest point of this model to the observation point is about 450 meters, so set the value to 400 meters. From the render, we can see that the fog gives the scene a sense of spatial depth. Then save the rendered image. Now let's switch the mode of volumetric environment to environment fog to simulate the Tyndall effect, namely the volume light. The Tyndall effect created by a whole piece of light is not obvious. So we need to block part of the light to turn it into beams. To make things easier, I just added some faces randomly at the side of the model. As for the light source, you can use any of them. 
sunlight, rectangle light, point light source, IES light, and so on. For environment fog, you only need to consider two parameters, distance and height. They are actually the same as the two parameters in aerial perspective mode, except that the unit is inches. Set the height to 5,000 inches, which is enough to cover the whole scene. Then, adjust the visibility range and intensity of the light until you get the desired effect. Sometimes, to better control the beams, you need to exclude lights that don't need the Tindo effect. V-Ray has an option to make all lights be affected by the Tindo effect, or to specify one or several lights to be affected. Finally, to facilitate the post-editing, add atmosphere in render elements, and save this render image separately. Now we have two images, the scene with an aerial perspective and the light beams with a Tindo effect. Put the light beam image on the top layer and select Screen. If the light beams are too strong, adjust the opacity of the layer. Then add text, and here it is, the desktop wallpaper is done. Let's see how it looks on the desktop. Nice, have you learned it? This is SketchUp Rabbit Hole. We will share tutorials on SketchUp modeling, V-Ray rendering, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and other architectural visualization tutorials every week. Subscribe to us and don't forget to hit the notification bell to keep up to date with our latest videos. You will get more interesting tutorials and examples of things that you've never seen before. We are special. See you next time.